my name is Jenny Stepaniak, and I am a registered and certified yoga instructor and meditation instructor. I'm also an aloe stem cell transplant survivor um, and leukemia survivor. So I had a stem cell transplant six years ago to treat my leukemia. At the start of my journey, I was prepared for the physical obstacles and pain that I knew I would endure and need to overcome, and I was ready for that. What I wasn't ready for was the mental and emotional toll that this would take on me. And after two years of suffering from extreme anxiety and depression, I found my way to the Chopra Center in, Carl, in Carlsbad, California for a yoga and meditation retreat. That week changed my life. I came to found through yoga and meditation, peace and calmness, acceptance of the journey that I'm on. I found purpose and passion to want to help others that were also going on this journey. It was then that I decided I would take the next steps and start to train to become a yoga and meditation teacher, and that's what brought me here to do you today. So I really look forward to spending this time with you. Um, we're going to do more experiential, less talking. Uh, there's quite a bit of slides, and you all have copies of it. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Um, if you have questions at the end, I'll try to save some time. Uh, you can also read through these at your leisure. There's a lot of information on them, and my contact information is on the back, so you can always feel free to reach out to me. Over the next hour, we're going to look at what yoga is and explore the philosophy of it. We're going to talk about pranayama and practice some breathing techniques. And we're going to talk about the physical aspects of yoga, yoga asana. And we're going to do a chair yoga session together. And we're going to look at meditation, talk about how to meditate and share in a guided meditation. Before we start that, though, I'd like to read to you a short story called The Two Wolves. When I look at my meditation and yoga journey, I like to reflect back on this story. And I think you'll see why when I get to the end of it. An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight, and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, superiority, ego, false pride, lies. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too. The grandson thought about it for a moment and then asked his grandfather, well, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. So when I think about this journey that we're all on, whether you're a caregiver, or patient, or a medical professional, this journey through transplant and blood cancers, there's a lot of evil wolves that can come up. And there's a lot of good wolves too. And the wolf that's gonna win is the one you feed. The way I feed my good wolf is by coming to yoga, coming to meditation, being centered, finding that peace and calmness within. I hope over this next hour you will all feel like you can feed your good wolves as well. So the philosophy of yoga. Yoga is a Sanskrit term that means union. It simply is the union of body, mind, soul, spirit, and environment. I like to explain what the, philo the philosophy of yoga is really, it's like a tree with eight different limbs. Today we're gonna to talk about three of those limbs. One of them is pranayama, which is another Sanskrit term. It just means simply breathing. We're gonna do some breathing techniques in a few moments. Then yoga asana is another um, branch of the yoga tree, and this is the yoga poses, and meditation or quieting the mind is the third branch we're going to look at. So what is pranayama? Pranayama, like I said a few minutes ago, is a Sanskrit term that means to breathe. When our mental state is so closely related to the, quo and fall, the, sorry, the flow and quality of our breath, that when we can control our breath and quiet it down, we can quiet down our mind and become more centered and more present in our daily lives. Why practice pranayama? Well, it reduces anxiety. It connects the mind, body, and spirit. It helps shift energy from the chaos and the craziness back to a place of centeredness. 
It facilitates pain management. This is an area that in my own journey I've used pranayama or breathing techniques quite a bit to help endure some painful procedures to get through unpleasant things. If you can focus on the breath, it can take, it shifts that energy away from the point of pain back into being centered. There's a couple techniques because of time today and I want us to have more time to experience. We're going to just do the first one and the third one together. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to be moving back and forth between the chair and the podium as we practice. The first technique is called complete breath. This is very good for revitalizing, rejuvenating. It's also really good if you're going to be speaking at an event to step outside and kind of connect to your breath a little bit before you come in. Um, helps you be very present in the moment you're at. So if you want to take your right hand, place it over your heart center. I'll mirror you guys. And your left hand over your belly. Now close your eyes gently. And as you inhale, we're going to inhale to the count of four, filling up first our upper lungs, then our lower lungs, and then our belly. And you want to feel your belly rise into your hand. And exhale. Four, three, two, one. Inhale. Filling up your upper lungs, lower lungs, belly, and exhale. Feeling your belly concave, emptying your lower lungs, and emptying your upper lungs. We'll do two more cycles. Inhale. Four, feeling your belly rise, and exhale. Two, three, four. Inhale. Three, four, and exhale. Two, three, four. I'm going to gently open your eyes. Hopefully everybody's feeling a little more calm. This is great for if you have anxiety traveling, flying in a doctor's office before a medical procedure. It's a really simple technique. The third one on here is alternate nostril breathing. It sounds a little funny. It looks a little funny. It's my favorite breathing technique, though. It is probably the best breathing technique I've found for calming anxiety. I do this before every meditation session. I'm going to show you first what it looks like, and then we can do it together. So I'm going to take my two piece fingers and place them on my eyebrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate closing my left and right nostrils with my ring finger and my thumb. So I'm going to close off my right nostril. I'm going to breathe through my left, close it off, hold it, let go with my right, exhale, inhale through my right, close, open the left, and exhale. So if everybody would like to try that, go ahead and bring your peace fingers to your middle of your forehead, softly close your eyes, cover your right nostril, inhale through the left, close your left nostril, open up the right. Exhale, inhale through the right, close, and open up the left and exhale. Inhale through the left, close, open the right, exhale. Inhale through the right, close, open the left, and exhale. Inhale through the right, I'm sorry, through the left, close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right, close, exhale through the left. Go ahead and bring your hands back into your lap. Take a full, complete belly breath and exhale. This is also really good for starting to get the left and right hemispheres of the brain talking to each other again. For those of us that have been through a lot of chemo and feel that continued chemo fog, this can help kind of just get things firing a little bit more. Hopefully that was comfortable for you all. This is something you can take with you and do anywhere. There's lots of really good um, apps. Breathe to Relax is one, and I have some slides later that talk about some of the apps that will also walk you through breathing techniques and exercises. So what is yoga asana? Well, in the West, this is what we typically think of when we think of yoga practice. This is the physical poses of yoga. I think it's really important here to mention that yoga is for everyone. I've talked to a lot of people that say, oh, well, I'm not flexible. I can't touch my toes. Yoga isn't for me. Well, I tell people, with all the chronic GVHD I have, 
with all the steroid weight I have, if I can not only do yoga but teach yoga, you can do yoga too. And today we're going to do it in the chair, which is even cooler. Why practice yoga? I like to relate yoga to how to walk calmly amidst the chaos in the middle of a storm. So just as the eye of the hurricane is the calm at the center of the storm, yoga and meditation is that eye of the hurricane for me. So in the chaos of all the treatments, of all the worry and anxiety that comes from being in this journey, whether you're a caregiver or the patient, if you can come to a yoga and meditation practice that really puts you at the eye of that hurricane, brings you to a place of centered calmness where you can approach life in a different direction. And the lessons of balance and flexibility and strength that we experience, whether it's on the mat or in the chair, we bring those qualities back into our daily life with us. We learn to be more flexible in the way we approach things. We learn to be more balanced in how we treat ourselves and how we plan our days. It's not just about what happens on the mat. It's more important about taking those qualities back out with us. Some of the physical benefits of a yoga practice, and this is regardless if you have health issues or not, you're gonna benefit from all these, but especially for transplant patients. And in my own journey, I found it's really helped with increasing mobility. I have chronic graft versus host disease in my joints. It's helped incredibly with that. Um, facilitating pain management, strengthening muscles from being on years of steroids and total body radiation and the other treatments that damage our bones and our muscles. Um, increasing flexibility and posture. And then a big one for me is improving energy. Um, I find if I start to get busy with life and get away from doing my daily yoga practice, I really notice that my energy level drops a lot. And that's something that I've kind of battled in my own journey through transplant is trying to keep that energy up. But I can be there for others. And the mental and emotional benefits um, are too numerous to count, but here are a few of them. <laughs> Man, definitely man, helps manage stress, reducing anxiety, instills relaxation, helps generate that mental clarity, creates present moment awareness. I really, I think that one of the biggest benefits that I've personally gotten from yoga is through this transplant journey, I have felt at times that my body wasn't my own anymore. My body belonged to cancer and it belonged to the doctors and to medicine and to chemo and to the transplant itself. And by finding this yoga and meditation practice that I love so much, I finally feel connected to my body again. I feel like my body is my own again. And that alone has, makes it worth coming to the mat every day. So chair yoga, has anybody in here participated in a chair yoga class? Did you even know chair yoga was a thing? So it's, what I love about chair yoga is so adaptable. So regardless of if you have disabilities or not, if you have limitations or not, the benefits that we just talked about, they're the same, whether you're doing it in the chair or whether you're doing it on the mat. Chair yoga is also great for, I work with patients in the hospital who can't get out of bed. Well, we can do yoga in the bed. You can do it at an airport. You can do it in the waiting room. Anywhere that you can sit, you can do yoga. The value of the meditation is being able to find silence and relaxation. It's having regular contact with your spirit. There's a quote that, it's by an unknown author, but I just, I love the, the thought of it. It says, I was looking for someone to inspire me, motivate me, support me, keep me focused. Someone who would love me, cherish me, make me happy. And I realized all along I was looking for myself. And that's what we find when we come to meditation. We find our true self. There's lots of physical and psychological benefits to meditation. Um, and there's been numerous scientific and medical research studies done on this. Some of it is decreased heart rate, normalization of blood pressure, reduction of stress hormones, strengthening the immunity, which can be really helpful for those of us who have been through transplant, pain management, better sleep, some of the psychological benefits are decrease in depression, decrease in anxiety, management of PTSD symptoms, which a lot of us, whether you're a patient or a caregiver, tend to have after going through a journey like this. Emotional regulation, greater mental clarity. I find meditation really helps with a lot of the chemo brain and fog that I still tend to experience. The act of meditation, it sounds big, 
sometimes if this is your first time ever hearing about meditation or coming to meditation, I used to think, I have too many thoughts. There's no way I can sit still for 20 minutes and not have thoughts. Well, you can't. That's not what meditation is about. It's not about stopping the thoughts. It's about finding the space between the thoughts. So we have thought, 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 but between each thought at the end of one and before the beginning of another, there's a gap, there's a space. And meditation is about finding that place between those thoughts, slipping into that gap, and that's where we find our true self. So six simple steps on how to meditate. For maximum benefit, it's recommended to meditate 20 to 30 minutes twice a day. This can be a little daunting, especially if you're new to it. It's better to meditate for five minutes than no minutes. It's also better to meditate for 10 minutes twice a day than an hour once a day. So it's constantly coming back and reconnecting to that spirit. Whenever possible, creating a disturbance-free environment. I have a little miniature dachshund that I love to meditate with, but not all dogs are great to meditate with. <laughs> so if you have animals or young children, it might be better to find a quiet place where you can shut the door and just take that time for yourself. The third one is really one of the most important, is to sit comfortably. So you don't need to be in a lotus position with your hands in funny positions. You need to be comfortable, because if you're not comfortable, you're not gonna wanna stay there. It's also important to try and remember to sit if it's available to you and not lay down. When we're in meditation, we're in restful awareness. When we're lying down and sleeping, we're in restful unawareness. And we don't wanna confuse our body with sleep and meditation. Now, with that being said, I guarantee you, you will fall asleep during meditations. Every experienced meditator will and does fall asleep during meditation. And when that happens, it's okay. It's what your body needs. But we just wanna make sure that when we're setting up a meditation space and a meditation practice, that we don't confuse our body by lying down. Because if I lie down when I meditate, I'm gonna be out every time. (laughs) Close your eyes if that's available to you. And then either begin repeating a mantra, which I'll discuss in a few minutes, or listening to a guided meditation. Then once your meditation's complete, take a few minutes just to sit quietly before returning to activity. It can be really jarring to the system if you come out of meditation and just jump right back into your activity. It takes the physiological part of your self to kind of, a few minutes to kind of adapt back to your surroundings. So just taking that time to be gentle. So in my private practice, I teach a form of meditation called primordial sound meditation, and it uses a mantra, which is just a word. It acts like a vehicle to kind of drive you to that place between your thoughts. So it's a way of using a thought because it's a word, so a word is a thought, but it doesn't have any meaning associated with it. Some other mantra-based meditations that you may have heard of are transcendental meditation, um, or it's otherwise known as TM, and then there's a few other um, lesser known ones that you may have heard of or not. Um, So in a mantra based meditation, the meditator will just simply silently and gently effortlessly repeat their mantra over and over again uh, throughout their 20 or 30 minutes of meditation. For today's purpose, because we can't give you all your personal mantras today, we'll use a general one which is called so hum and it really just means I am in Sanskrit. So if you'd like to go ahead and close your eyes, take a few breaths and let's let your mind start to settle. And now silently to yourself, start to repeat the word, so hum. So hum, so hum, so hum. Continue to repeat this mantra silently for a few more minutes. I'll watch the clock, and when it's time, I will guide you out. All right, gently let go of the repetition of the mantra. Start to bring your awareness back to the room, taking a moment to connect back to your breath. And when you're ready, gently flutter your eyes open. So that was the Reader's Digest version of how to do a mantra-based meditation. If you're interested in learning more about primordial sound meditation and having your own personal mantra, 
um, you can, in, on my resource slide, which is in your, pa in your packets, you can go to ChopraCenterTeachers.com and you can look for a Chopra Center certified meditation teacher in your area and they can instruct you on primordial sound meditation and calculate your personal mantra for you. For today though, I have a beautiful guided meditation that I'd like to share with you all. So if you can find yourself, this is going to be about a 10 minute meditation. You can find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Gently close your eyes. Start to feel your breath flowing in and out. Just acknowledging and becoming aware of your breath. Start to shift your attention away from thoughts, sensations, sounds. Focusing on your breath. Taking a deep breath in to the count of four, three, two, one, and exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Gently returning to your natural breath, relaxing more with each exhale. Let your eyes become heavy and relaxed. Let your mind become relaxed. Listening only to the sound of my voice. If you find your mind wandering, simply bring your awareness back to the sound of my voice as I guide you to a place of deep relaxation and inner stillness. Bringing your attention to your feet. There is no tension now as your feet relax. Every tiny muscle in your feet releases as tension begins to melt away. The nerves and muscles in your calves become completely calm. Your knees and thighs relax as tension melts away. The nerves and muscles of your hips are calm and let go. There is no tension now as your belly and back release and become relaxed. Allow your rib cage to relax, releasing every tiny muscle. Allow tension to drain from your arms as they sink. Relax your face, relax your jaw, soften your eyes. Release across your forehead. As your body relaxes deeper and deeper, tension is gone. It feels so good to let go, to surrender to this feeling of peace and tranquility. Now imagine you are standing on a white sandy beach. It is early in the morning and a light hazy mist surrounds you. The sun is rising slowly you can feel the warm orange light on your face and your body. You are feeling content, at ease, relaxed. You feel the sand beneath your bare feet and it is soft and warm. Imagine yourself lying down gently on the beach. Listen as the warm ocean waves are breaking on the sand. You're laying so that your feet are facing the ocean. Every time you breathe in, the warm water flows from your feet to your head. Every time you breathe out, the warm water flows back from your head to your feet. Breathe in, feet to the head. Breathe out, head to feet. Listening to the sound of the ocean, as you continue to breathe, you feel the warmth of the water bathing your body cleansing you from all anxiety and stress. As you continue with this breathing, the water washes away pain. Allow the water to flow through your body unimpeded. Allow the gentle rocking of the waves to fill every part of your body, to wash every tiny space clean. As your breathing slows, your body continues to relax deeper and deeper. You have a wonderful feeling of openness, a connection to your surroundings, to the universe. You feel a universal energy flow through you, 
filling every space in your body, cleansing and healing. This healing energy is dynamic and changing. Feel it flow and vibrate in your body. You feel every part of your body come alive, vibrating with life energy. You feel pools of energy concentrate in different areas of your body, purifying and healing. Connecting back to your breath. Breathe in love. Breathe out tension. Breathe in harmony. Breathe out discord. Breathe in healing. Breathe out disease. Once again, connecting back to your breath. Breathe in love, breathe out tension. Breathe in harmony, breathe out discord. Breathe in healing, breathe out disease. Allow your body to be still and share what it needs to heal. Stay in this place of silence for a few moments. When it is time, you'll hear my voice guide you out. For now, be still and silent, totally at peace, as you listen to the sound of the waves. As you start to bring your awareness back to your breath, you feel a beautiful, deep sense of peace within you. You feel strong, confident, compassionate, patient, and forgiving. Allow these feelings to permeate your body everywhere. Allow your body to be immersed in peace and compassion. As you bring your attention back into the room, allow the feelings of peace and calm to remain with you. When you are ready, slowly open your eyes. Welcome back. How's everybody feeling? Awesome. Good. Good. Alright. So, does that feel like 10 minutes? Did it feel shorter? <laughs> yeah. I think we actually went about 12 minutes. So, what's next? Well, it's really important to create a daily schedule. You'd say it takes 28 days to create a habit. So if you can create some type of manageable schedule, whether you only have 30 minutes a day or an hour a day that you can break up to contribute to your mindfulness practice, to have some breathing, some movement, some meditation. After 28 days, I think you'll find that it just becomes part of your life. What I've noticed is people around me notice when I'm meditating and when I'm in that place of centeredness and peace. And they'll see those changes in me. When I first started this, they saw those changes in me before I even noticed them. You may find the same thing. You can find a private yoga teacher by going in meditation teacher by going to this website, the chopraeteachers.com. Um, I'm sure there's other private yoga and meditation teachers out there. I just this is where I did my training and I know that they're fully vetted and um, I can vouch for the training that it takes to get this type of certification. You can also go to group yoga and meditation in your area. So health clubs a lot of times will have yoga classes, um, the Y, and then yoga studios. Now, if you're immune suppressed, I know sometimes that can be a real concern going into a health club facility or even a yoga studio, and that's where having a private teacher can really help come into play because they can come to your home and work with you in your environment and you don't have to worry as much about the germs. So here's some resources on breathing and there's a study, um, there's a lot more out there but this is one that was published by the NCBI um, on the effects of modified slow breathing exercises on stress and the smartphone app that I like to use is called Breathe to Relax. Some meditation resources, and this is all in your packets. Um, here's some studies done by different doctors and experts in the field. And then two of the apps, the smartphone apps that I really like to use, the one is Insight Timer. This is especially nice if you're doing a mantra-based meditation, so you're not constantly having to stop your mantra and look at your watch or the clock to see the time. This does it for you, and it has a really nice chime. When You can set it for whatever time, if you have five minutes, if you have 20 minutes. Um, the nice thing about this too, I think it's kind of cool, you can see who else in the world or how many people in the world and where they're at are also meditating with you at that exact moment. So I think it's kind of neat to create that sense of community. And then 
the walking meditation is something I am just getting into. Um, there's a lot more in the mindfulness field talk about mind, uh, movement meditation, moving meditation. And I like to walk. It's good for us. I like to be outdoors and in nature, and this is a great one. You can put your headphones in and listen to it as you walk. And then yoga resources. So yogainternational.com has uh, yoga classes um, that you can download. You can do them in your home. There's also a lot of great information at Yoga Journal. And then, you know, because I love the Chopra Center and train there, you can go to the Chopra Center <laughs> or chopra.com and look up any of their yoga resources. This is just a list of some recommended readings, um, some books that I have really loved and that have helped me on my journey. If you're interested in learning more and studying more about yoga and philosophy and mindfulness and meditation, it has really been my honor to guide you all through this hour of yoga and meditation today. Thank you so much for allowing me to come and share this with you. And I'd be willing to take any questions if you have any.